Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks very much again. Uh, so I will speak here about the impact of COVID-19 on the poverty dynamics of Nepal, especially uh, coming out of the shocks in remittances. Uh, I've taken the impact of remittances in two aspects, shocks in international remittances and domestic remittances. So uh, as a background, COVID-19 is a crisis that uh, is health as well as economic crisis especially in developing economies like Nepal. It has impacted a vast majority of workers uh, because a lot of workers work in the informal sector in the economies like Nepal and especially the remittance dependent countries in remittance dependent countries. It has hard hit the households that uh, depend a lot on the remittances for their consumption for acquiring assets etc. So coming to Nepal, uh, around 60% of the households receive remittances and uh, out of the remittances, they spend about 80% for their consumption purpose. Uh, that's why the remittances suck, especially coming out due to the COVID-19 will have uh, great implications for poverty incidents, especially in the rural areas of Nepal. So this paper just estimates the impacts out of the remittance shocks, uh, remittance shocks coming from international remittances and shocks in domestic remittances in the poverty incidence of Nepal. So uh, Nepal has some peculiar features in terms of remittances. Uh, the World Bank data shows that uh, Nepal is the fourth country in terms of remittances percentage of GDP and it occupies 21st position in terms of the remittance received. It received annually 8 billion US dollar and with that 8 billion US dollar it occupies fourth position in Shark region. And remittance also contributes a lot uh, to the foreign currency earnings around two-thirds of the foreign currency per year come out of the remittances. So this graph uh, depicts the dynamics of remittance flows in Nepal. The remittance as percent of GDP uh, was just 10% uh, uh, 20 years back and it increased to almost 30% in 2050, 16 and come down to 23% in 2019. In terms of volume, the remittance inflow, the special international remittance inflow was 47 billion Nepalese rupees 20 years back that increased to 879 billion in 2018-19 and it stagnated almost in 1920. So uh, with respect to the household welfare, remittance play a lot of role. Uh, for instance, 56% of households in Nepal receive remittances uh, as per the results of the survey done in 2010-11. And the share of remittance receiving households more than doubled from 23% in 1995-96 to 56% in 2010-11. And the, the role of especially international remittances has increased over time. Such share of international remittances increased from 55% in 1996 to 80% in 2010-11. And as, as I mentioned, the remittances play a great role, an important role for household welfare by financing their consumption expenditure. Out of the remittances received, almost 80% are spent on consumption by the households. That's why the remittances have played, played uh, or contributed a lot to poverty reduction in Nepal the absolute poverty fell from 42% in 1996 to 25% in 2010 11 and further to 18.6% in 2018. So, th this is an credulous achievement of Nepal uh, despite the low growth rate, which was just 4.37% over the 20 year period. So, regarding the role of remittances in poverty reduction, there are some empirical evidences. For instance, one study done by the World Bank shows that 
Around one-fifth of the poverty reduction in Nepal can be attributed to international migration and remittances. And there are other, other evidences too, for instance, Acharya and Gonjales, Dev Kota, there are other empirical instances that, uh, that indicate towards the role of remittances per poverty reduction. So the COVID-19 has uh, uh, impacted the remittance flows in Nepal. Uh, there are some projections for remittance inflows, uh, such as the World Bank, uh, the Asian Development Bank, International Monetary Fund. They have projected that remittance inflows to Nepal will decline by more than 10% in 2020. And there are some pessimistic projections uh, by some national organization, for instance, Nepal Policy Institute has projected that remittance could decline by 40% in 2020. So the domestic remittances has also fallen sharply because 62% of Nepalese workforce work in informal sector uh, because the COVID-19 has impacted the informal workers severely, the domestic remittances also can be expected to have fallen very sharply. So this chart shows the recent trend of remittances, monthly remittance flows in Nepal. The, the monthly remittance flows declined very sharply in 2020 April by almost 51%, by 25% in May and thereafter seems to have recovered. But this recovery is not expected to maintain in the medium term because the migrant workers uh, have returned. Uh, there are some estimates by, uh, by the ACAFS Institute that almost 600,000 workers will return to Nepal due to the COVID pandemic. And uh, another estimate by Nepal Association of Foreign Employment Agencies it shows that at least 500,000 Nepali workers will return home due to this pandemic. And if we see the trend of migrant workers, so the number of migrant workers fell by 25% in 1920, and the number fell for all the major uh, worker destinations, for instance, UAE, Saudi Arabia, and other major destination countries. So th this can, uh, this shows that uh, the remittance income, especially the international remittances, will uh, decline in the year 2020 and even in 2021. So with respect to the impact of COVID-19 on poverty, there are a few empirical estimates made by World Bank and uh, other institutions. Uh, they have broadly uh, use the household surveys to estimate such impacts. For instance, in Pakistan, the absolute poverty could rise uh, to 40% from the current 24.3%. Uh, there are some estimates for India too, uh, by the World Bank, by the UNDP and other institutions. So one special case is for Myanmar, where the IFRI Institute has, has estimated that the poverty rate among the recipient, recipient households could increase by 7.5 percentage points. So in this, in this paper, I have used the simulation from Nepal Living Standard Survey data, which was collected in 2010-11 uh, to measure the impact of remittance shocks and poverty. Uh, since the data was some nine years back, I extrapolated the household income. Uh, the base for such exp extrapolation is uh, the Central Bureau of Statistics has conducted annual household surveys uh, from 2013 to 2017. And I extrapolated the household income by quartiles by the growth rate uh, from the household surveys from 13 to 17. And I extrapolated the poverty line by using the CPI index and extrapolated the remittance income received by the households by the annual growth of per capita remittance in Nepal. So this extrapolation seems quite closer after, after I simulated the poverty incidence in Nepal in 2019. The poverty rates as well as the provincial poverty estimates are quite closer to the estimates made by the National Planning Commission in 2019. So it makes a sense to do a simulation in the extrapolated data rather than the original household survey data. 
So I take three scenarios. So one is the 5% SOC in remittances. Another one is 10 to 15% SOC, which I call moderate scenario. And in the pessimistic scenario, uh, the remittance is expected to fall by 20 and 40%. So with these SOCs, uh, when I simulated in the household budget survey data, I found that poverty incidence, especially the headcount ratio, could rise uh, from 0.87% under the optimistic scenario to 7.53 percentage points under the most pessimistic scenario. So this, this incidence in poverty could pull 0.2, it could push 0.26 million under the optimistic scenario under the poverty line. And under the most pessimistic scenario, it could push, uh, it could push 2.26 million people under the poverty line. So another uh, important aspect of the simulation is that the remittance shock will increase the death of poverty and the severity of poverty. The, po the death of poverty is here measured by the poverty gap ratio and the uh, severity of poverty by the square poverty gap ratio. So the square uh, gap ratio, you have two minutes left. Yeah. So <laughs> next, next I simulated under the uh, disproportionate socks. Means all households are not getting the same socks. The poorer households who work in the countries with weak social protection programs and who work in informal sectors, they are likely to get higher socks in remittances. So when I when I employ higher socks in remittances for the lower quintiles, uh, the incidence in poverty uh, is a little bit larger now the poverty could rise by 2.21 percentage points under the optimistic scenario and by 8.32 percentage points under the pessimistic scenario. And the impact on the poverty death and the poverty severity of poverty as measured by the squared poverty gap will be larger under the disproportionate shocks and remittances. Next, I, uh, I uh, simulated on the relative role played by the SOX in international remittances uh, as well as the SOX in domestic remittances. So this, the, the results from this simulation shows that SOX in international remittances will play a great role for the incidence in poverty. For instance, the SOX in international remittances could increase the poverty uh, from 17.99% uh, to 24.48% under the most pessimistic scenario, while SOX in domestic remittances could increase the poverty by just uh, one or two percentage points only. So this, this results uh, show that uh, remittance SOC could really uh, have some implications in poverty rate in Nepal. It could increase the poverty uh, by 7.53 percentage points on the most pessimistic scenario, it could increase the poverty death, it could increase the severity of poverty by increasing inequality among the poor. So one policy implication from this simulation result is that Nepal needs to extend its social protection program to the most vulnerable groups who work in the countries that have, that have weak social protection and who work in informal sector. So one further uh, work can, in this area can be uh, to, to measure the impact on multidimensional aspects of poverty since the data from uh, the survey is not available in recent time period. Uh, the, next, the next thing that we can do to improve these impacts is to wait for the next round of the household survey data. And as, the day, as soon as the data becomes available, it will be more realistic to do simulation on the new data uh, to get a better picture of the impact from remittance socks. Thank you very much. I will stop here. Thank you very much, Dr. 